Each year, the PEP Board of Directors presents Environmental Stewardship Awards to member companies whose work has made a significant contribution to Gulf Coast's triple bottom line, the environment, the economy, and the community. The awards celebrate the inventive and unique approaches our members take to solve environmental problems and enhance the sustainability and resiliency of our coastlines. Our first award goes to Ocker Solutions. Ocker creates the products, systems, and services required to unlock the world's energy needs. Ocker Solutions' mobile site overhauled their environmental policy to significantly reduce the company's carbon footprint and environmental impact. In our mobile facility plant since 2003, our employees manufacture uh, subsea cables called umbilicals. Uh, these cables are used to bring all the energy from the bottom of the ocean to the top of the platforms onshore. Aqua Solutions has an initiative worldwide to reduce our carbon footprint. We also uh, we utilize uh, electric golf carts in our facility uh, instead of uh, gas power to uh, help uh, eliminate the use of diesel and gasoline. So we save over 600 gallons a month just in diesel and gasoline alone, which has a big impact on CO2 emissions. We also uh, reduce the amount of wastewater we put into the uh, mobile area water sewer system uh, by over 10 million gallons a year by uh, redoing our uh, air handling unit that was water cooled to air cooled. Uh, one of our big initiative that we're very proud of is our recycling effort. So as you know in the south it's very hard to find companies that recycle office waste. Uh, we do a good job recycling our metal and our PVC and our copper but when it comes to wood, dunnage, uh, pallets and office waste, it's almost impossible to find somebody. So we located a sponsor here in the south that will take the office waste. We also recycle uh, wood and cardboard and uh, that's used to fuel burners. So uh, some of our scrap goes to the Alabama Industrial Development Training here we have a good relationship with. Uh, some of our scrap power cables we donated to the oyster farmers in Bile Battery. The environmental impact from what we've done in Mobile was a reduction of CO2 emissions by over 600 tons a month, which is a pretty significant impact from our 2018 numbers. The savings of 600 tons equates to quite a contributable environmental impact. Uh, when you look at those type of numbers, uh, for the year, it would take uh, over 310,000 trees to absorb what we save per year at Acker Solutions. And again, I think the 10 million gallons uh, per year savings of wastewater into the mobile water treatment system is a big impact as well. Our second award goes to Alabama Power, a subsidiary of Southern Company, one of the nation's largest producers of energy. Their Wood Duck Habitat project is a partnership between the Berry Environment Stewardship Team and the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. The Department of Conservation and Natural Resources reached out to our best team, the Environmental Stewardship Team at Plant Berry, and let us know that the Wood Ducks habitat is, there's not as much of a habitat for the ducks as they would like to have and that there is a solution by making some wood boxes and delivering them into the area for the ducks to use for their nesting. The conservation team actually worked with us to let us know where the, where the boxes would be best suited to be placed, and so we were able to, uh, to place them in the appropriate location with their help. And it's an ongoing program where we'll continue upkeep and maintenance of the boxes. The project is actually with our best team for the Barry Environmental Stewardship Team and it's uh, comprised of employees not only from Barry but from our Washington County and Theodore co-generation plants as well and it's strictly volunteer and I think it just really shows the heart of our employees and their desire to uh, impact the community and the environment. Our next award goes to AMNS Calvert, one of the most advanced steel manufacturing facilities in the world. AMNS partnered with the Wildlife Habitat Council to focus on management of their additional 1,000 acres of timber and protected wetlands. This project received certification for their Wildlife Habitat and Biodiversity Improvement Program. 
Our sustainability goals include um, managing our habitat to the best of its ability. Um, so we did that by managing the timberland, um, by managing the invasive species, uh, and then by uh, installing some habitat improvements such as the bat boxes as well as an osprey platform and installing a pollinator garden. So our approach included engaging our young professionals that we are hiring right out of college and uh, we asked them if they were interested in volunteering to lead some of these projects and uh, certainly they were interested in the environment. It was a great opportunity because it gave them uh, an opportunity to not only learn about the environment but to also learn how to lead projects and communicate and build a budget and develop a schedule. Um, so I think it was very successful from that standpoint. So some of the long-term benefits of the projects that we had was to take the property that we had, the undeveloped uh, acreage that we have, and to make sure that we were managing it to the best of its ability from a habitat standpoint. So the Wildlife Habitat Council is a nonprofit organization that, that also certifies uh, these projects. And so the benefits from, with partnering on the certification is to um, have our projects nationally recognized, uh, also to be able to promote uh, our sustainability initiatives to our stakeholders such as our employees, our community, as well as our customers. APM Terminals. Mobile is a deep sea container terminal that serves as the gateway for intermodal containerized cargo to come in and out of the port of Mobile. In this project, APM Terminals is working to reduce their carbon footprint by targeting greenhouse gas emissions. Our goal is to reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible. As our vehicle fleet has aged and it became time to start replacing some of them, we started looking at electric opportunities. And, and we found some great opportunities locally here in Mobile. So we have purchased 20 uh, electric uh, vehicles, Nissan Leafs. An electric vehicle produces 50% less CO2 than a, than a gas burning vehicle. Um, this is just our first step. So we've got a lot of vehicles out there and as uh, vehicles come up for replacement, we hope to be able to continue this. It's a 135 acre facility and ships, uh, they come and go at all times. So we have to work at night quite a bit. It takes a lot of lights to light up a 135 acre facility, especially when you're operating heavy machinery and all the safety challenges that can come with that. So what we have is 521 high mass lights on our terminal. Uh, of course, they're all sodium based lights, a thousand watt light bulbs. And we've replaced all 521 with LED lights, which has reduced our carbon emissions within those lights by about 50% in totality, which is a significant uh, drop when we talk about how many pounds of CO2 that many lights can create in an hour. As we've expanded our terminal, we're putting things like electrical ducts and conduit in the ground with our eyes set on shifting more and more of our container fleet, not just talking about vehicles that we, we use to, to move people around from point A to point B, but I'm talking about heavy machinery that lifts containers, moves containers, and, and, and you know, can lift 90,000 pounds that have quite a bit of, of a carbon footprint, we will eventually be able to shift into different types of machinery that are electrically powered. BASF creates chemistry for a sustainable future. The Macintosh site produces additives that go into key products like plastics, the automotive industry, and medical devices. For this project, employees built a pollinator garden to improve habitat and engage the community in pollinator conservation. The pollinator garden project stems from a biodiversity research initiative um, that BASF launched called the Living Acres Program. And so essentially what that does is it um, allows us to understand how planting milkweed um, um, promotes a healthy monarch butterfly population. Yeah, so what's really unique about our garden is two things. Our Macintosh facility is the only facility in North America that has an outdoor classroom located at its plant. What that does for us is it allows us to continue to promote STEM education. Um, it allows us to bring students to our site um, or organizations to the site and it helps them to or it gives them an opportunity to meet our employees um, to learn about the chemistry that we produce to learn what we do on a day-to-day -day basis um, and then ultimately as they're in the classroom it helps them to connect what they're learning in the classroom 
to possibly how they can use those skills um, in a career path. Ultimately, for us, it's about teaching the local students about environmental stewardship. We did make a commitment to our site leadership that our employees um, would maintain the garden. And so there is a committee, if you will, of employees um, who also share passion for this particular project. Um, and on a uh, monthly or, or at least quarterly basis, they get together and they do pull the weeds. And literally right now in the fall, where we start to see a uh, pickup, if you will, um, of especially the butterflies that come through the area. It gets really exciting um, to see the fit traffic, if you will, or the wing traffic of the butterflies that come through. Ivonic is a world leader in specialty chemicals with more than 20 individual production units across their plant site in Mobile, Alabama. They have an ongoing program to reduce waste from their operation. In this project, the facility has eliminated two waste streams, wood pallets and AMEO salt disposal. Under RECRA, the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, which is in English the hazardous waste rules, you have to have a, a, a waste minimization program, meaning you're always looking for the best technology, the best disposal method for your waste streams. So we're always looking for something that has a value inside so we can look for alternatives to landfilling or incineration because those are complete wastes. After years of looking, after years of asking my vendors to, you know, keep on the lookout for someone that could reuse pallets, finally uh, one of my contractors came to me and said, hey, there's a local program that does this on a large scale. So they actually take broken pallets, rebuild them, resell them, and any scrap wood that can't be made into pallets, they take the hardware out, they shred them, and it gets burned as fuel. We were actually approached by um, a couple of different companies that want our uh, salt waste, because it's ammonium chloride, it's high in nitrogen content. So instead of putting all this uh, waste salt into a landfill, we send it to them and it becomes an ingredient for fertilizer. Okay, the environmental impacts of what we're doing is um, easy to see because so far this calendar year, we have reused, recycled over a half million pounds of perfectly good will, wood that would have normally gone to a landfill. So instead of being wasted, it's back out on the market. And um, as for the salt, uh, 400,000 pounds so far this year has been used as an ingredient for fertilizer instead of just simply going to and taking up space in a landfill. To landfill something is just a total waste of that material. Nothing's recovered from it whatsoever. And, um, and that's, that's the point of the waste minimization program. And our last award goes to Vokert Inc., a multidisciplinary engineering firm founded in Mobile, Alabama. In this project, they provided engineering design, environmental permitting, and construction oversight on a two-phase project to restore a 700-foot section of Tiawassee Creek and stabilize an adjacent drainage ditch. Uh, the major issue with Tiawassee Creek was that the channel had started to incise and we, we typically refer to that as a head cut. It essentially means that it's rapidly eroding and moving upstream. The reason that's such a problem is it creates a lot of sediment that then gets into Dole Leaf Bay and then ultimately into Mobile Bay, uh, degrading water quality and causing problems with fish habitat and ecology. So our goal in that project was to stabilize that, to, to restore the creek back into a uh, naturally functioning stream. To compound things, we also had issues with exposed sewer lines that potentially could have failed, um, and then the concern of, of property owners that they're losing parts of their yard, that their fences are falling over, that trees are falling. The real innovation came in in ways of streamlining communication. That was one of the big components of the project, was finding a way to reach out to 15 or 20 property owners and engage them individually, but also as a group. I could get into the innovations that we used on the design side with really unique, fun softwares and doing 2D modeling to make sure that our shear stress was not exceeded in any one point in the floodplain. Um, but at the, the heart of it, it really was just a matter of breaking it down on a one-on-one -on -one human level and engaging the property owners. The project has two primary immediate benefits. 
because we've addressed the head cutting and the erosion, we're seeing a reduction of anywhere from 200 to 300 tons of sediment per year that is now no longer migrating downstream. Um, that's huge. Uh, the other immediate benefit is a water quality benefit that's somewhat related to the, the lack of sediment flow, but we're also seeing significant reductions in turbidity, uh, which means that the fish habitat's improved, the vegetative habitat, we're actually seeing aquatic plants showing back up in the creek, which prior to construction, there was no aquatic plants. We also see with stream restoration projects, reductions in nitrogen and phosphorus levels uh, from upstream in the watershed. Um, those are some really great immediate benefits. We also uh, see long-term, even further reductions in nitrogen and phosphorus, um, which cause uh, pollutants and uh, degradation of fish habitat. And um, for anyone that lives on the Eastern Shore, we really like our fish habitat and our shrimping habitat and, and our recreation. The goal of our annual awards is to inspire more businesses to follow the example of these seven leaders. These companies are choosing to be more environmentally conscious and responsible. Please join us in congratulating our 2020 award recipients for their environmental stewardship along our Gulf Coast. Corporate responsibility starts with being a good environmental steward, especially in the industry that we're in. Uh, I've lived here for 10 years, and this is a small slice of heaven that we live in down here, and there's a lot to protect. You know, in, in the Mobile area is also, it's blessed with a great future. Uh, we see all the economic opportunities there. We see all the interest from new businesses. And I think that we're only gonna continue to grow. And with that, the responsibilities that we all have as corporate citizens here, th that responsibility gets even bigger. So we need to set the right example and we need to make sure that we're protecting our environment.